Mesosaurus was one of the first reptiles known to have returned to the water after early tetrapods came to land. A study on vertebral column proportions suggested that, while young Mesosaurus might have been fully aquatic, adult animals spent some time on land. Parareptilia is a subclass of reptiles which is variously defined as an extinct group of primitive anapsids. Whether the term is valid depends on the phylogenetic position of turtles, whose relationships to other reptilian groups are still uncertain. Bunastegos walked upright on four limbs, with the body held above ground, this information directly suggests that it could be the first tetrapod with a fully erect gait. It is particularly notable for the large bony knobs on its head, bigger than any seen in other species of parasaur. In life they were probably skin-covered horns or ossicones similar to those of modern giraffes. Provalosaurus bridges the morphological gap between the advanced South African and the more generalized parasaurs. African and Brazilian fauna often are very similar. Scutosaurus was a massively built reptile, with bony armor, and a number of spikes decorating its skull. Despite its relatively small size, it was heavy, and its short legs meant that it could not move at speed for long periods of time, which made it vulnerable to attack by large predators. As a plant eater living in a semi-arid climate, including deserts, Scutosaurus would have wandered widely for a long time in order to find fresh foliage to eat. It may have stuck closely to the riverbanks and floodplains where plant life would have been more abundant, straying further afield only during times of drought. Elginia is known only from a single skull, triangular and armed with a number of paired bosses or spines, with the longest pair growing out of the back of the skull. These spikes were probably used for display rather than physical combat. Porcolophon persisted through the Permian-Triassic extinction event, but went extinct in the early Triassic. It is considered to have been a small herbivore, its skull is distinct because of its latero-posteriorly facing paired cheek spikes, along with spiked dermal ossicles. Hylonymus is the earliest unquestionable reptile, it had small sharp teeth and it likely ate small invertebrates. Petrolachosaurus was the earliest known reptile with two temporal fenestrae holes at the rear part of the skull. This means that it was at the base of Diapsida, the largest and most successful radiation of reptiles that would eventually include all modern reptile groups, as well as dinosaurs and other famous extinct reptiles. Petrolachosaurus is thought to be a completely terrestrial reptile that lived in a conifer fern forest. Though the palatobasal articulation is open, it was probably immobile, similar to the skull of the tuatara, contrary to some earlier claims made about the metakinetic mobility of basocranial joints in Yungina and other early diapsid reptiles. Hovasaurus was well adapted to an aquatic life, with the tail being laterally flattened like that of a sea snake. Some stones have been found in the abdomen of its fossil, indicating the creatures swallowed these for ballast, preventing them from floating to the surface when hunting fish. Claudiosaurus is presumed to have been partially oceanic, living its life in a way similar to the modern marine iguana. A recent study however indicates that its vertebral column tail and leg proportions are closer to those of terrestrial reptiles, though it is noted that marine iguanas similarly only differ from terrestrial counterparts very subtly. Coelorosauravus possessed long, rod-like ossifications along the edge of the body. These bony rods were not extensions of the ribs but were instead newly developed bones derived from the skin of the animal, a feature which is unique to the genus and its close relatives. It is believed that during life, these structures were covered with skin, forming wing-like surfaces which it could use for gliding.
Unlike its longer winged relative Cuniosaurus, aerodynamic studies have shown that it was probably not a glider, but instead used its elongated ribs to parachute from the trees. These reptiles, such as Icarosaurus, are closely related to lizards and the Tuatara. This genus was able to glide short distances using wings. Hyphalosaurus was among the most aquatically adapted chorostodorans, with smoother, flatter scales than its relatives, a tall and flattened tail for swimming, a long neck and webbed feet. Because the torso was fairly inflexible and the limbs were not particularly adapted for aquatic life, it probably swam using mainly its tall, flattened tail. Champsosaurus vaguely resembled gharials and, like thems, it was primarily aquatic, catching fish with its long, tooth-lined jaws. Only females could come ashore to lay eggs, while males primarily lived in water. The wing membrane of Sheraviptorix, which stretched between its very long hind legs and tail, would have allowed it to glide as a delta wing aircraft does. If the tiny front limbs also supported a membrane, they could have acted as a very efficient means of controlling pitch stability. Drepanosaurus is hypothesized to have been an insectivore, using those large claws on the second digits to lift bark and dig into crevices and grooves on trees to find insects. It spent its time in trees using its gripping chameleon-like hands and feet to climb from branch to branch as well as its long tail to help wrap around branches. Megalankosaurus is smaller, also built like a chameleon. Its head is superficially very bird-like and its shoulders formed a withers that would have served as an attachment site for especially strong muscles. The eyes on the skull point upward suggesting that Dinocephalosaurus approached its prey from below before striking. While superficially similar to Tanistrophius, it appears to be more suited to aquatic hunting. Tanistrophius lacked the musculature to raise its neck above the ground, and that it was likely completely aquatic, swimming by undulating its body and tail side to side like a snake or crocodile. It was a shallow water predator which used its long neck to stealthily approach schools of fish or squid without disturbing its prey due to its large body size. Trilophosaurus would look like a big green iguana, it was an arboreal reptile feeding on vegetation. When on the ground, it would have had to keep an eye out for predators, its long toes and claws would have provide good grip on the ground to outrun larger predators. The Indian Shringosaurus was a quadruped animal of a massive aspect, it was also a herbivore. Its most striking feature is the presence of a pair of horns, similar those of ceratopsid, the presence of horns is dimorphic, these structures were probably sexually selected and used as weapons in intraspecific combats. Hyperodipedon is believed to have been herbivorous, feeding mainly on seed ferns, and died out when these plants became extinct at the end of the Triassic. It was the large eyes with sclerotic plates, which allowed for good sense of vision. Archosaurus is one of the earliest known archosaur, the group living representatives consist of birds and crocodiles, and also includes all extinct dinosaurs and pterosaurs. Archosaurus itself was an ambush predator, waiting for its prey to enter the water. Erythrosuchus was the largest predator of its time, it walked on all fours and had limbs which were positioned semi-vertically under its body, unlike the more sprawling gait of most earlier reptiles. While Erythrosuchus is not considered an archosaur, it is thought to be closely related to the last common ancestor of all archosaurs. Like other Erythrosuchids, Shansisuchus was a large-bodied carnivore with a large, deep skull. Shansisicus is unique among early archosauriforms in having a hole in its skull called a subnarial fenestra. Euparcaria had hind limbs that were slightly longer than its forelimbs, which has been taken as evidence that it may have been able to rear up on its hind legs as a facultative biped. 
Although it is close to the ancestry of fully bipedal archosaurs such as early dinosaurs, it probably developed bipedalism independently. Euparkaria was not as well adapted to bipedal locomotion as dinosaurs and its normal movement was probably more analogous to a crocodilian high walk. The long ribs of Mesostotrachylos almost certainly were covered with some form of skin which facilitated gliding habits. Unlike in Cuneosaurids, which had downward curving wings, its ribs were mostly straight, and were not naturally cambered to create an airfoil. The Longisquama holotype is notable for a number of long structures that appear to grow from its skin. The current opinion is that Longisquama is an ambiguous diapsid and has no bearing on the origin of birds. Rutiodon strongly resembled a crocodile, but its nostrils were positioned far back in the head, close to the eyes, instead of at the tip of the snout. It had enlarged front teeth, and a relatively narrow jaw, somewhat resembling that of a modern gharial. This suggests that this carnivore probably caught fish and it may also have snatched land animals from the waterside. Lotosaurus was a herbivore, shearing off leaves with its toothless, beak jaws. Like some other members of the Papasauroidea, it had a sail on its back, granting it an appearance superficially similar to that of Permian pelycosaurs. The purpose of this growth on the back of Lotosaurus and Arizonasaurus currently has an unknown function, but other prehistoric animals had these growths and the theories associated with these animals can be applied to Arizonasaurus, such as display and thermoregulation. Although Ephigia resembles an ornithomimid dinosaur, it is thought that this is just a case of convergent evolution. Postasuchus was one of the largest carnivorous reptiles during the late Triassic, it lived in a tropical environment. The extreme shortness of the forelimbs relative to the hind limbs, the very small hands, and measurements of the vertebrae suggest that Postasuchus may have been committed to bipedal locomotion. It was a hunter which probably preyed on dicynodonts and many other creatures smaller than itself. <laughs> 